Welcome back to MSI 2018 and our next game featuring Flash Wolves and Fnatic. Caps making his way onto the stage now with a much anticipated matchup against Maple. The two considered to be the best mid laners in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And Caps, I think, is kind of the, the one who comes to everyone's lips first, just because of the hype Yasuo performs, you know, pulling out that champion, really making a staple in this tournament with it. But Maple has been right on his heels and is more considered kind of the team-oriented player. Yeah, and I also think it's because Maple's teams have been doing better than Caps' teammates. Maple uh, has had Betty and his top laner doing so well in this series. And you look at Reckless, been underperforming, uh, but that's forcing Caps to carry that much harder. Look at his damage percentage, look at his DPM. He's been doing so much. I definitely agree. Uh, and it's funny that they also share quite a lot of champions. Uh, you know, we saw the Zoe play coming out uh, from Maple earlier, getting assassinations into the back line, even through five on five team fights. And Caps as well showed up on that champion. So I'm super excited to see how the pick and bands even goes for these two mid laners. I mean, so here's the big question. Who comes out on top within this matchup? I mean, frankly, for me, I don't think it matters for the breaking point of the matchup. While okay. these are two incredible mid laners, for me, it is really about that bottom lane, which is why I favored Flash Wolves, because I feel that Betty and Sorta are just performing that much better than Hilly and Reckless. And I have to say, it is so hard not to predict Flash Wolves after the game that they showed against Kingzone yesterday. That was you the say that. best game that we have seen Kobe. of League of Legends. And I feel like there's something that's going to follow that statement. Should there we is. Take, a, uh, take another look at predictions? So I was a little bit closer to predicting Fnatic over Flash Wolves than I led on at the beginning of the day. I actually went ahead and did it. All uh, right. I, I'm taking the leap. I'm going to predict Fnatic to actually take this game because I know that they, right after yesterday, after that King Zone game, they were immediately, the coaches, discussing the bottom lane of Flash Wolves, how to attack it. So they have been crafting a strategy around this bottom lane and what to do about it for their entire prep time. And I also have confidence that Reckless is a better player than he's shown so far at this tournament. And Uzi showing up and showing that he is a better player than he had shown previously at this tournament uh, gave me the confidence to go ahead with it. I mean, Reckless might be a better player than he showed at this tournament, but as is Betty, no one expected anything of this guy and he is now propelling himself towards star status. Either way, Kobe's putting his faith in the EU squad here in this big clash in the mid lane. Let's see if Fnatic can end Flash Wolves' winning streak as we send it over to Captain Flowers, Papa Smithy, and Bettius. Thank you very much, Dash. Hopefully we get to see a good game here, but on the blue side, let's go ahead and kick things off with some rosters. We have the home favorites in Fnatic with Whippo in the top lane, Broxa in the jungle, Caps at mid, Reckless on AD carry, Hillisong beside him as support, and coach Dylan Falco. Took a second to sweep over that great hometown team of Fnatic, but on the other side, their opponents on the LMS, they of course are the Flash Wolves. Their top laner is Hanabi, their jungler, Mujin, mid laner, Maple, AD carry, Betty, support, Sword Art, and of course, their coach, Warhorse. And this, gentlemen, will be quite the interesting rematch to watch because the last time these two teams met, it was a fairly close game, a bit of back and forth. Fnatic drafted themselves a pretty heavy pick poke composition, and after chatting with their coach, he says that was the worst draft he's had all year. Given that Flash Wolves were given things like the Vladimir, they had the Soraka to counter the poke, and then they drafted the Orn to offer the engage they needed to stop the siege from happening. And one champion I'm wondering about is the Yasuo, because we saw Hanabi yesterday as a top lane Yasuo player. There was a great interview with Maple where he said, Hanabi's not even the best Yasuo on the team. I win every <laughs> oh, wow. 1v1 against him. So some Yasuo play on either side. It's a very possible ban as well, but I can't help but be hopeful. Let's see how they do it. We're into champion select as Kha'Zix is the first ban from Fnatic. They want to keep that one out of the hands of Mujin. The response from Flash Wolves, Whippo's not allowed on Scion. I love the Kha'Zix Galio play we saw from Flash Wolves against Kingzone where they use Kha'Zix to get in the middle of the team and take away the Elder with a very nice set piece play and double aggressive bans towards Mujin. They don't want him controlling the place, pace of the jungle and we know that Broxa is much more on the trundle and more farming side of things, at least in the early game. And a trend that we have seen from teams early on in the tournament was taking Whipper off a lot of his comfort picks. Things like Scion and Gangplank have been very regularly banned away from him, and he hasn't really steered much towards things like the Cho'Gath either. So I'm interested to see if they look to replicate that strategy, maybe put him on an AP carry again, where on day 
day one, Fnatic did not have the best of performances. Well, the trundle you brought up in the jungle for Fnatic, Papa Smithy, is the second ban here for the Flash Wolves, so they're not just targeting that top lane, while Fnatic's final ban of this first rotation is going to be the Rakan, as Flash Wolves pay respect towards Reckless, removing the Triss. Let's talk about what's up, because there's two factors to talk about here. Both of the Betty specials are up in the Ezreal and the Varus. Those were the two AD carries that he's prized this tournament. When it came to junglers, Brox had really been focused on the Trundle and the Skarner, which is also available, but he wants to take the Olaf. It's the better part of the jungle matchup as Olaf is strong into Skarner. This does mean Ezreal open for Betty. And the thing is here for Fnatic, Brox actually hasn't played Olaf once during the regular season. It was not a champion that he steered towards. Oh! Oh my word, we've actually got a Xin Zhao lock in. Let's get Musa. down to business. This is going to be great. Korean solo queue was dominated by Xin Zhao towards the end of the year. We actually had some challenger jungles pull it out in those games as well. Very strong pick into Olaf. You go phase rush and you just kill the damn Viking. It's a great all in. And if you can control the mid lane, the fabled mid priority that we always talk about, where you know exactly where the enemies are around mid lane, someone face checks his in jail. He doesn't have to use his dash till after you flash away. You best believe you're dead. And along with picking up this surprising pick in the Zinjiao, why not pick up the one everyone was expecting? Grab the Ezreal there for the team as well, making sure Betty's got that comfort pick. See, now I feel like that for Fnatic, they were expecting the Ezreal to come out from the side of Flash Wolves, and they're likely going to go towards the Civet. A lot of wave clear, a decent laning phase, and a big comfort pick for Reckless. But I think the Zinjiao part is the part they maybe didn't calculate. Oh, no, 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 no. Because no. You, well, <laughs> the one thing you think when you have Olaf picked and Kha'Zix and Grey are gone is that Olaf can run at any enemy jungler and have a combat advantage. They definitely found one he can't. All right, Whippo this time looks to be put onto the Camille, so gonna be playing sort of a different role compared to what you would expect from him on those tanks. Has that split pushing champion instead, while Reckless will be on the Sivir that we've seen him on many a time before. Maple thinking about grabbing that mid lane before the second part of the bands come through, and it looks like that Zoe will indeed be locked in. Now, you look at the enemy lineup, the, t the junglers, Olaf, not going to be the tankiest, but of course, will be up there. The top laner is not a true tank. There's no Orin here. It's going to be a Camille, and you actually have a bit more latitude to not have to worry about Zoe's damage falling off as early. So when it comes to the Zoe against Fnatic's comp, and of course, against Capsa, noted Zoe player himself, it's a pretty good spot, and he can double ban to protect it as well. I feel like that uh, Fnatic right now are looking for something like a Galio because with the composition that they've drafted, they're going to want to play a lot more towards bot side and team fighting is what they're gearing towards as well. And offering that combo will give them a strong mid to late game. But for Flash Wars, it feels like they're going for the same approach that Fnatic went for last time of the, the Pokes, the Siege. They have so much long range damage in the form of the Ezreal and the Zoe that it's interesting that they choose to ban away the Soraka themselves. Perhaps they're saying, you know what? We don't want to allow you to have that poke for days on end. Double tier Ezreal Mystic shots and Zoe Trouble Bubbles oh. are going to be a constant thorn in the side for anyone on this Fnatic lineup so far. Braum banned away now by the Flash Wolves, along with that Vladimir you guys already mentioned. Soraka out of the picture. Does Fnatic want to take out another support? Or where do they decide to focus? I feel like they should just ban out Orn. It's an extremely strong top laner, one of the most popular in the current MSI tournament. It offers you safe and key. It's one of Hanabi's biggest comfort picks. And I feel like the while uh, you can do finest the Camille into the matchup, it's just kind of a free champion for Flash Wolves to pick up. That kind of gives them a bit of everything. Well, I think Flash Wolves are agreeing with you, Vedius. They're hovering over it right now, thinking about making that their fourth pick here. That means their support will be the last selection of the draft if they go for this, but it's just so enticing to grab the Orn. I actually want to back up Vedius also, especially if we see the Orn locked in here. Consider what they haven't picked. You always have to say, okay, four champions, pick what's left. It's support, and the way they got their first four victories was counterpicking support, getting a 2v2 winning lane matchup. They're already happy with the Ezreal, getting a laning advantage there as well. You can always load in, teleport over your Orn and go for a tower dive and get things rolling. Very much this gives them a lot of options, and we know that not much preys upon the Orn. Well, it's Talia locked in for Fnatic. They want some roaming potential there in the mid lane, and if you're talking about roams, why not get the guy who goes on a voyage with or without an ally sometimes to back her up? So a lot of rotation capability there for Fnatic with those last two picks in Talia and Tom. 
as Flash Wolves have that last support pick to think about. Up against something like Tom Kench, Morgana could be seriously intimidating. I mean, it's interesting because if the Binding lands onto Tom Kench, you can definitely shut him out. And it complements the pick Siege style of play that Flash Wolves have kind of drafted for themselves. But when a target gets caught, you have the Tom Kench consume to then save that target. You also have a spell shield on top of Sivir. So I feel like in terms of the pick potential, it's slightly mitigated and it's slightly harder to execute. But when there's all this threat coming out, when you're grouped up against a tower, there's so many different things that you have to be careful of that it's difficult to compensate for them all. It's a really exciting draw. There's a lot of little nuances we'll get through as they show up in the game when it comes to attacking bot lane, because we know Tilia loves to go bot lane. We know that Flash was a counterpick and support to take the bot lane turret. What is Tom Kench going to do? Well, he wants to roam and get a jungler to help him, but he's going to be pushed up by double range. There's a lot going on in bot. And you know, we talked a lot about the draft as a whole, but I have no idea what Mushin's going to do on this Xin Chao. I must admit, I'm not familiar with the champion. I've seen some of the builds who are very early Trinity Force, but yep. I'm excited to see what he can do with it. Xin Zhao is actually the champion I've played the most other than the Skarner. Well, we got an extra <laughs> over here. I am excited to see this champion. I am so pumped to see somebody picking this up, see how he's going to make use of it here in professional play. Press the attack yep. will hopefully be oh, the interesting. decision there for the rune. We know that that's, there's a lot of different options yes. on the Xin Zhao. We, you mentioned the phase rush earlier. We heard the phase rush coming out as one of the things that we see from, I believe it was you actually, Papa yep. Smithy, that said in the Korean ladder. Yep. That's one of the strategies. Press the attack. I like really is well. another one if you want a little bit more burst. Yep. There's a lot of different things you can do, but this time around, it is press the attack for Mujin on the Zen. They all help you do one thing, Flowers. They help you go in. It's a one-way trip. help you be a man. Yep. Let's see what he can do on the rift here today. We know this champion can run out of control. We know he can snowball against whoever dares to go up against him if he plays it right. And we'll see if Flash Wolves can continue that win streak and stay undefeated. Clearly the crowd, the crowd is a little uh, yeah. one-sided. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, experience, of course, being in the LCK studio, letting the cha crowd chants come through. Very one-eyed crowd. They want to see the hometown favorites come through. Of course. And remember, in terms of the standings, what this means as well, because after RNG secured the win over Kingzone, Fnatic, not having the head-to-head -head record against RNG, makes climbing that much harder. So if you can take a game off the team that is yet to lose, it contributes a lot to moving up in the standings, but that speaks to how difficult it is as well. This right. Flash Wolves team has not lost a game yet to this MSI, completely defying expectations and crushing the competition. And at the opening of the day, we heard from them how they were initially being like, okay, our goal is to win one game, and now we've won six. Just the incredible momentum this team has had so far, the successes they've found, and it hasn't been games that look like, oh, wow, yeah, I guess they sort of won that one because their opponents messed up. They've played some clean League of Legends, and now their ward will spot out Fnatic moving towards the Flash Wolves Red. Evolution of the level one meta is something that hasn't really been talked about at MSI, but lots of late invades, one minute 30 timing invades. Of course, they famously king zone caught MLHG unaware in the previous game, wasn't enough for a victory, but got them a big lead at the start. This time it's gonna be spotted, so nice ward placed. They're trying to set up vertical jungling here that will allow Camille to push up with no fear of a jungler coming out top side. There's going to be a cost, and Xin Zhao had the early information to know exactly where to path, so he won't be starred for camps like MLXG was in our game one. Surprised that Caps decided not to ward the entrance to their half of the jungle because they're expecting Mujin to have no knowledge of this, but with a good early ward from Flash Balls, they know exactly what the jungle is doing. Now the ward will. No. Caps, place your ward, my buddy. He did. <laughs> oh, he did? My apologies. He went for the safest possible ward as he walked ah, back up. onto the Raptors, yes. He, he was mistake. afraid of being audaciously charged to death. That's and very true. So, went the most respectful route. Amujin does pick up two big buffs. And just to answer your question earlier about build, the big build for a long time in Korea, which we may not see here, was Warrior, Trinity Force, and then a static shift for more burst. There wasn't enough burst <laughs> in the first two. Right. They want more. The crit zim. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like the, with Olaf, when he came into the meta, a lot of different teams kind of came up with uh, potential answers. Skarner was like one of the ones that could kind of match him as well. And uh, It was Zerse here in Europe that was a big advocate for the Trundle in the jungle. And it feels like that as these have developed, I can see Xin Zhao being a great skirmisher up against the Olaf, going for press the attack and those extended trades. I feel like that he has the ability to win out in those one versus one. The power of Olaf is he runs in and you have to run away because you can't take the all in if the first axe hits. Xin Zhao just says, 
you're in range for my charge and goes in as well and has that damage to try to trade with him. So I always love the aggressive sides rather than the ones that can escape better like a Sejuan. Exactly. The bubble connects on two caps. Follow up from the Paddle Star takes him down to about half HP as Mujin jumps in towards Broxa. Broxa low on mana. Mujin with that mana advantage. Also got to be careful though. Broxa capped into trouble. First blood and taken down by Maple. Extremely delayed flash there from Caps, thinking that he could go for this trade, but he was standing on top of his passive. He couldn't get the full Q off, and without that extra bit of damage, there was no way in which they were going to win that skirmish. And Mujin and Maple were of one mind to find a way to go in, whereas Brox's first thought was to pull back, even though he had hit the first axe. There could have been an attempt at an all-in. They didn't want to have the worst-case scenario happen. Still Flash Wars, pick up the kill. I mean, Broxa, he had little to no mana, so you can imagine that maybe even after hitting the first axe, he didn't feel confident enough going in. And Caps taking this initial poke of damage, you think, okay, not great situation, obviously, a decent trade back for him, but there, Broxa, right now, after throwing the first axe, no mana, the W misses, and at this point, I'm thinking, Caps, you need to flash to dodge that Q, but instead he sticks around, and Mujin dives in, ready to secure the kill. Never want to play chicken with a Xin Zhao, and both no, of them sir. walk up, and the Xin Zhao walks away. Pretty happy, no Kill credit to him, but Maple already with the lost chapter on the first part. And that's the thing about the Xin Zhao as well. The charge is point and click. There's no way you can miss it. It's not a Jarvan combo. You always are going to be able to find your way onto that opponent as long as they're within range. Caps now a little bit behind. I we'll have to see how well he can recover. Remember, these two mid laners, like we said, have had the strongest performances so far here at the tournament. So just one death at the Raptor camp. I wouldn't be counting caps out just yet. And they have met before. The last time these two teams met, it was quite a competitive series. You can just see that the gold difference at 15 and 25 was not that big, but it was flash walls that were primarily in control. It was one deciding fight around the middle lane that swung a big advantage over to flash walls. Maple found some significant flanks that just ripped through the lineup of Fnatic. Should be mentioned that for that game, flash walls did have the outscale team fight, so they were pretty happy with the fact that it went quite even in the early game only a thousand gold they turned on later when that turned on eventually this looked like one vladimir orn combo would get them over the line so while they weren't necessarily in control fully they were still happy with the game extending this one's a very different predicament and speaking of predicaments we got a lot of fanatic members up top fanatic looking to set up the three-man dive against hanabi up here no level six is available besides Bwipo just yet. Fnatic backs themselves away in the bottom lane. They recognize they've got all this focus up here in the top side. Hanabi not yet level six, likely to be taken down. Seismic shove comes out, taps taken low, but it's Hanabi who goes down. Everybody from Fnatic still alive. See what's gonna happen on the bot side of the map though, Sword Art. He's already taken a lot of damage. Sword Art's very low. The Flash Wolves haven't found anything resembling a return kill just yet. Maple wants to rotate down here, see if maybe he can facilitate that happening, but it doesn't look like it. Teleport's still available for Whippo, remember, so Flash Wolves think better of it. At the end of the day, because there's less members up top side, they don't have to respect things like the Devour. Three members were enough for Fnatic to get a kill. Flash Wolves on the other side, well, frustrated trying to make that happen. Maple goes for an invade here, hoping to find Olaf, but it's only Caps returning to lane. Trouble bubble over the wall makes him drowsy. Oh, oh the damage! Good lord! Maple solo kills Caps in the middle lane. He shuts down the young prodigal mid laner and asserts his dominance over who the king is. In the middle lane, it's between two turrets, Fedius. He found the <laughs> proto belt with the W and got the extra burst needed. Level six is not normally burst range from full, but he pulls it off anyway. Very nicely done by Maple. Ma oh. I was thinking he was going to make him have a bad time. Sit in lane with 300 HP, feel real careful, but no. Maple, you've got to remember, has been a pro player for such a long time. The duo of Maple and Casa is well known and respected by so many pros. And coming into the tournament without Casa, people thought, would Maple still be able to perform? But up against the young rookie, up against, I say call him rookie, he's been playing for a year now, but up against the young player in caps, you can see how well Maple is confident in his play. And the proto belt really gives him confidence. The damage calculation, that's about 900 health, doesn't matter. Gets it taken down easier as you like. The Xinjiao was there just in case. Not needed. Top side though. Hanabi not having the greatest of times in this one versus one against Whippo. He's at about 60% HP. Caps makes the rotation up here. They want to grab the first turret. It will be taken incredibly low. Hanabi gets the knock up in the air, but not without losing the turret first. 
Ujin shows up just in case they wanted to chase after this top laner. And now with Maple here as well, they could look for more against Fnatic. Broxa will also show himself here in the river, cutting off Maple, allowing Fnatic to get everybody out. Fnatic are able to secure themselves the first tower of the game, which is what Flash Wars were trying to get themselves in the bottom side of the map. And to be fair, they've invested a lot of resources. They've been doing very well in terms of the two versus two, keeping that pressure up. And now we see a TP coming in from Looks like Betty. Oh, of course. He's, no, he's just hanging Ezreal. out. He's just coming but back. So many me. things have been happening. Baited by the TP. <laughs> Ezreal, Betty. It's, come on. <laughs> you it's, got the oldest, it's the oldest trick in the book. That's like 10 games ago <laughs> that happened. Come on, Betty. We've been, we've been seeing TP Ezreal's for all like three days now. I'm just so used to it now. You know, you think, oh, of course, it always catches you off guard. One bit, little bit of bookkeeping. Fans at home might wonder, OK, we're seeing Camille versus Orin two games in a row. I remember the Orin being very robust in the last game and lasting a lot longer. Remember that after the turret dive, a lot of resources down, Hanabi had to walk to lane. That's why I was more susceptible to being shoved out and bullied by the Camille. Oh boy, Maple trying to make some moves yet again. The flash away from Hillisong keeps him safe from that sleepy trouble bubble's consequences. As long as you avoid the big hit from the Paddle Star afterwards, the bubble itself isn't going to necessarily send you to the grave. He does get thrown out again. Will fall into the trap mode as Cap steps on it, but dodges the Paddle Star afterwards. Sword Art now potentially in some danger, looking to be cut off by the Weaver's Wall, does have to use the Flash. Do remember, oh, we're seeing more here, but Maple probably exit at this point. Do remember, this is actually the first game that Flash Wars haven't picked up first turret. We get to inspect their gameplay, or when it comes to access to the map, there's actually more access to Fnatic than any other team that has played Flash Wolves at MSI. Something we also haven't touched on yet is the fact that Bwipo is playing Camille, and he has yet to do this so far in his uh, pro play. Typically, we see him on the tanks. We have seen him a bit on the GP, but when it comes to carries, he was not the man that was kind of expected to play that based on his playoffs performance. And now, he is kind of being put with the responsibility to be one of the big damage dealers, be one of the big threats going up against him. And I think that was most people's takeaway message from game one and two, or day one of MSI, was no more of the Swain, no more of the Vladimir. Back to Sion, back to what you know. Like you say, we get to inspect him on a very different side of the champion pool. We know he plays the carries. Previous to coming to the pro play, was known for champions like Jace and those carries. But actually executing at the pro level, being able to apply enough pressure to make up for your less than team fight impact compared to the Orn is something we get to watch closely. Well, with first turret already under his belt and a 25 or so CS lead, he's been having a good game thus far as we are just about to crest the 11 minute mark into the game. Checking up on the other lanes as well, it's a CS lead in the bottom lane for the Flash Wolves. Betty, this AD carry who's just, as the analyst zone said at the start of the day, in a tier of his own so far, obviously winning the lane up through this point, considering he's also got the support advantage in Morgana versus TK, and in mid lane, Maple also having the farm advantage over Caps there. Again, something I want to stress is that Flash Wolves have been best able to set the pace of a game because they took first turret, and from there, they were able to hit their checklist and play very cleanly. They are behind in tempo. You need to play a different style where you sacrifice the minimum. They might have to sacrifice around an Ocean Drake, or at minimum use this turret. Ujin going after this Drake. Xin Zhao, another champion that's very adept at soloing those down rather early just due to the way the kit works and the fact that as long as you have the mana, you can spam the abilities very effectively. He'll pick that one up for his team, give them some extra regeneration to facilitate staying around in these lanes just a little bit longer as now the plays are looking to be made. It's Hillisong coming in behind the bottom lane of Flash Wolf. Sword Art, no Flash available. Remember, Ooh. over the wall they go. Hextech Automation, Automatum going to be issued. They do take Sword Art down. Betty barely going to be getting himself away. Mujin can't quite find the damage. Uses the ultimate, looking to get himself out. Doesn't can't matter. quite do it. Reckless grabs the kill. It's some kills going over, but there's also some coming right back. They grab the kill into Broxton with the True Shot Barrage. Hanabi getting himself out, or at least trying to, as Whippo comes in from behind, not quite finding the hit from the second part of the hook shot. Hanabi goes down to Caps. Maple comes in from oh. the side, finds a long range battle star. Betty's there as well, but the Mystic Shot will not find oh. the kill just yet. Maple gonna be taken low and down. Caps gets that one. That was sick from Whippo, punishing the fact that Maple used his ulti. He gets himself the shutdown. Fnatic find a successful fight, but Flash will still play that as best they could. Whippo needed one to get his eye in, but the second one was lethal, taking down another member of the Flash Wars. This is what happened when you don't have that control over the map. Flowers, you have to play a bit differently, and the collapse was beautiful.
Let's take a look. Acer Predator replay right now about how that very hectic fight played out between these two. So it kicks off from Fnatic because they used the Tom Kench to get in from the flank. Remember, Sword Art has no summoner spells available and they have the TP from Camille and there are two members mid from the Flash Wall. So very easy to get the numbers advantage from Fnatic. So close for Betty to dying, able to just get away as the Camille ulti dies. And then this is the problem with the Xin Zhao. Once he goes in, if he doesn't have the team to follow, that he can't get back at it. Oh, look, he charged in on a 2v4. That was definitely some Mulan stuff right there, thinking that he could go and be a man. It didn't work. He gives up his life. Mulan didn't die in the movie. I know. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we got some uh, alternate fan fiction going on here. But you're <laughs> waiting for this big super play at the end. So many different things happen, but the prediction knows exactly where to go. Back onto the paddle star, and Maple goes down. Maybe I overhype it, given that it is a timed ability, but I still love the fact that Buipo trying to make those creative plays, punishing Maple for flashing in, and he very nearly was able to turn that entire fight around by himself. And that is why you have to show so much respect towards this individual in the middle lane for Flash Walls. But Fnatic, they find a big fight. They now sit with the gold lead. And the game state all comes back to inspecting the dual turret dives that happened five to six minutes earlier, where Fnatic went for the percentage play, 3v1, took down Hanabi in the top side. Flash Walls couldn't be, wasn't able, weren't able to match that on the bottom side of the map. And the turret and everything else is from that early play. Ujin loses about half of his health there due to a good seismic shove from Caps. Caps, of course, rebounding after those first couple of deaths. Two, two, and two now on this Talia. Having the Archangel staff stacking up so he can get that Seraph's embrace as soon as possible. Make sure he's got that extra shield, that extra power with this champion. 24.8 thousand to 22.8 thousand gold. Fnatic, off the back of their early plays, have found themselves 2 thousand gold up against the current undefeated team. But you know, Fnatic have found themselves in leads before and they haven't been able to close things out. The next couple of steps are gonna be very important because for Flash Wolves, they're a team that always find avenues back into the game. Mujin, he's level 10 on this Xin Zhao. He has a two-level advantage over Broxa. We're yet to see the full pick prowess of this composition come into its own yet. And once these towers start to fall, once Flash will start grouping up, that's when Fnatic have to be very scared of the risk that Flash Wars composition can bring. And because they have this Camille, it's always about how much further have they moved their map play. they has been there for about a minute now, waiting for a play onto the Zoe once again. But when it is the Camille, when it's not the team fight tank in Orn that's all about the TP play, you have to be a bit more critical of how much they can move forward. Sure, there's the chance for push around to the game, but a ban buff comes in, it's an Orn throwing out the ult, things might fall apart for Fnatic. See Fnatic having a good idea of where Mujin is as he clears out those wards. Obviously, they know that he's hanging around the bottom side. They don't want to find themselves vulnerable to any of those ganks that he could potentially show up for. You can see in the inventory that he's got the Ruby Crystal as well. Working towards the Phage, he buys that now. He has the daggers in inventory heading towards that Trinity. And look, just like Nocturne, if you're going to go tank on Xin Zhao, you should have picked something else. So basically, you're kind of priced in. Go for a pretty heavy carry build. Might even go for a Guardian Angel next after that, and then kind of find some situational items after there. But like you know, Flowers, he's behind when it comes to any sort of kill involvements to assist only to his name. And a slow Trinity force from the jungle is about 23, 25 minutes into the game. It doesn't feel good. No. And you already talked about it, Papa Smithy, about how the difference in trading towers was so important. Just imagine how much more control of the enemy jungle Mujin could have had if that bot tower had fallen, if Flash Wolves could have started grouping up a little bit earlier and Fnatic successfully denying that dive, keeping that tower alive, and then finding a play down in the bottom side of the map is all turning in their favor as Maple now needs to be very careful. Maple barely avoiding the seismic shove there. Cap's trying to play around the fact that he knew where he would return to through that portal. TP going to be used towards mid lane now by Betty. Showing up here to make sure he's ready. Should Fnatic try to try anything else but bot, after what they've done so far? Bot lane has been exposed and reckless. He now gets to freely push that in, go back to base. And he, he has been in a deficit for a lot of this game. Ooh, we'll be interrupted there. Good ulti from Betty. Uh, also got to keep track of Sword Art. No, he doesn't want to decide to go for any kind of play. But Reckless was also one of the individuals that for Fnatic has been discussed around his performance, his impact in team fights. Sivir is a big champion for him, and his performance in late game team fights will be heavily evaluated.
Roxas shows up mid lane to keep Cap safe from Maple, who lands quite a lot of damage yet again with the bubble into Paddle Star combo. But Mujin, he sees the Drake is once again ready. He's got Sword Art next to him just in case there's trouble. And Flash Wolf should be able to secure this objective. Now we should talk about tendencies also, because you were mentioning Reckless already. This guy loves to take a lot of CS, a lot of minions between 15 to 30 minutes. This sort of portion of the game we're in right now. He loves to hit a side lane and farm. They're against a TP Ezreal. They have to really respect the fact that they can be pushed on, but they also have to respect the Fnatic can make an aggressive move of their own at the top. Anami landing the knockup. Caps forced to use the cleanse to get himself away from the CC. Maple still wants to see if he can maybe go fishing for something here. Sword Art coming along as well, ready with the bindings, ready with the black shields. See if they can find much, but it doesn't look like it. Quite interesting that Fnatic chose to push the top tier two rather than securing themselves the Rift Herald. It will be running out fairly soon. And you've already talked a lot about this TP Ezreal, Papa Smithy, and how efficient it can be when going back to base and then appearing in another lane. It's also allowing Maple to roam around the map and mitigate the roaming power that Atalia does have. You just have to think for Reckless. You have to minimize the amount of time you play side lane in a 1-3-1. You don't have teleport yourself. Flash Wolves can be in so many places so quickly with their mobility, they can just surprise you compared to conventional logic with how fast they can rotate. Speaking of rotations, Hillisong makes his way towards bottom lane to try to keep Mujin away. Will manage to scare him off there by placing down all three of those marks as Maple needs one more auto attack. Finds the turret there in the top side as Betty, Sword Art, and Hanabi need a couple more autos to take down that tier one in the mid lane. They won't quite find it. Somebody so much as sneezes on that thing and it's going to fall. And note that Fnatic, they found a big team fight win in bot, but it is Flash Wolves that are about to secure themselves their third outer tower. They've started utilizing the amount of map mobility that they do have, the poke in their composition to just chip away at these towers and they're the ones that are gonna regain the gold lead. Oh, Reckless. Ooh, have to pop the heel to get away from that one. Betty jumping in very aggressively, not afraid of the European AD carry and not afraid of the tier one turret either, taking that one down and now bringing Flash Wolves into the gold lead. These are really nice lane assignments from Flash Wolves. We noted very late the Fnatic had sent three top because it was kind of a right turn. It was a bit of a curveball to what you would expect because when it comes to what they got playing the top side of the map, it's a bit of damage on an inner turret, some wards that will time out. They're not going to be played Baron anytime soon. It was pre-20 minutes. And then Flash Wolves just stepped back, said, okay, let's get our lanes in the right spot. They take two two turrets on the map, and now map control's a lot more even than when Fnatic owned it a few minutes ago. Turret goes down in the bottom side. Flash Wolves, three turrets, Fnatic, two. 34,000 gold or about there for both sides. Baron now live. 20 minutes into the game means neither side likely to pursue that soon, but we do enter the phase of the game where it's important to maintain control over the area. Hanabi not as afraid of Whippo as he was before has some farm, has some gold and some items under his belt, and also has his friends coming in to say hello. Whippo flashing out of the way of that ultimate. Maple wants to come in, find the bubble. Hextech ultimatum gonna be used to dodge away from oh. that one. Whippo looking to get himself over the wall, but the flashes after will make sure he cannot do that today. Broxa and Caps were attempting to go after the Baron, but it's just not possible. Flash is doing a good job of punishing the split push from Whippo. Fnatic were not in a position to really gain anything off the back of that because Betty is single-handedly holding on to the middle tower. Flash Wolves are so easily able to roam around the map with this Sword Art and Maple combo that Flash uh, Fnatic are kind of struggling to really gain any real advantages. And there's no way that you can bait Flash falls into thinking you're doing a Baron when it's Talia and Reckless on one and a half items. It's not enough damage there. You don't have obscene tankiness either to keep it going forever. So around the 20 minute mark, you can use the buddy system, you can go bot, and you can be very confident the punish on the top side is basically nil. Betty will continue farming up here in that top side as items are coming online left, right, and center. Trinity Force completed for Xin Zhao means now he can work towards some of those more potentially defensive options if he wants. You already mentioned the Guardian Angel earlier, Papa Smithy. Lich Bane on Zoe means the combo is deadlier than ever as long as she can weave the auto attack in there. And Ezreal now having the Iceborne Gauntlet completed as well as the Evolved Muramana. Archangel stacking, and that stack is about halfway towards being done. This will probably be our fastest three item transformation of those double tiers because we've seen about 26 minutes is about when you can see if you go Iceborne Gauntlet, a bit cheaper than the Trinity right. Force. That is obscene poke. If you get a Baron buff, which is not trivial, Hanabi's in a side lane, the Zinjao's not a tank, taking the Baron is hard. If you get a Baron buff and you have 
double tier completed and transformed on the Ezreal and just Maple on the Zoe, we're talking one shot on basically anyone in one rotation. At the same time, if you don't have a Baron buff, you're up against a Talia that's looking to make plays like this. He's got the AP, he's such a threat, and he knows how to play this champion. Now behind enemy lines, trying to zone away Hanabi, but the Baron is being taken at the same time by the Flash Wolves, down to about half HP. They choose to back away. Fnatic are trying to collapse, teleport. Not gonna go through on that one as Mujin looks to zone away the bottom lane of Fnatic. Ornall comes through, True Shot Barrage also gonna fire after it. Audacious Charge continues as Mujin goes in and finds the kill. Really decisive collapse from Flash Wolves. They start the Baron knowing there's no way for Maple uh, Caps to get there. We blast to cancel his teleport. They're straight back on it. Flash Wolves not willing to stop just yet. Hanabi will be the one absorbing those blows from Talia. Meanwhile, Whippo still in the bottom lane, still looking to push. Flash Wolves need to make something happen here, or Fnatic could get the better of this overall. Betty goes over the wall, wants to deny the blast cone from Broxa. Broxa wanting to try to steal this one away. Gonna be taken very low. They want to try to shut him down. Baron down to about 1K. Where's it gonna go? They got it for Fnatic! Fnatic take everything as they secure the bottom tower. They secure one in mid. Broxa steals the Baron, and Flash Wolves, they're left with nothing. Flash Wolves thought they had outthought them, but they could not kill the Olaf. They would have clean up here. One kill does Betty, but it doesn't matter. Fnatic, I thought their hands were in the cookie jar. Nope, they got everything. Disaster for Flash Wolves. They were playing that so well. The fact that they forced the TP out of Whippo, they were committing to the Baron. All they had to do was secure it and back away. But Broxa with the steel, Mujin with the early smite. Flash Wolves, they could not secure. It's a different day, and we have to remember they did not set the pace of the game, and they end up getting rushed. This actual overall macro play is immaculate from Flash Wolves. They forced Camille to basically either die teleporting in or not show up. The Talia had already used her Weaver's Wall. There's no way for her to get there. It's five people rolling in to kill. Okay, so far, so good for Flash Wolves. The moment Camille, st Camille sticks to bot side, we know she can't get there. She doesn't have Teleport. They try to rush down the Baron, but they have to kill Olaf. But they get rushed. The Baron falls long enough. They try a 50-50, and it doesn't go their way. Caps is also just continuously damaging the Baron, trying to get it within smite range for Baroxa. He gets so low, and then here we see the smite comes in early from Mujin because he thinks that Broxa will go for an early smite. The boost doesn't come in from the rest of Flash Wolves. Now Fnatic are the ones in control of the map. And Camille is a champion with turret threat. They can't pull back again and again. They had to play with a risk. That risk proved too much. The Flash was up on Broxa. Flash Wolves, no way to kill him. And thus the Baron goes to Fnatic. Broxa becomes the hero of the day. And now it's up to the entire Fnatic squad to make the most of it. Sitting on a 5,000, eh, 4,500 if I'm being totally honest about it. Lead means that they've got the power to push multiple lanes at the same time. Baron up cannon minion, now pushing towards the mid lane. As you've got bonus mystery gifting activated, quadruple legendary, and esports bonus skins right now as Pentakill and Baron Steel promotions are back for MSI 2018. That steal means that those chances are active here today. So if you end up getting something extra special next time you shop, give Broxa a nod and a thank you as the Flash Wolves just want to get Fnatic the hell out of their base. Redemption comes down, turret's still taken very low. Only a few hits left on that one. Sword on at about half HP. Capt is taken down and Betty goes on a killing spree. You can never underestimate the Flash Wolves. These guys have so much poke and pick power with their comp. Caps gets caught out of position, and now it could be Whippo too. The Drowsy onto Whippo will be interrupted by the first part of the Orn ultimate, critically allowing Whippo to flash over the wall, keep himself safe. As Reckless is dead down that mid lane tier three. Whippo taken very low, tries to jump back in and maybe do something, but there's not much to do. Both solo laners on Fnatic now dead for the next 15 seconds on Caps, 45 on Whippo. The rest of the team makes their way out. Maple and Betty are playing so well, and Maple, he's looking for more. Maple does find the Sleepy Trouble Bubble down onto the Tom Kench. However, the cleanse will get Hillisong away just fine. Drake is alive. It'll be cloud number one. Two oceans already under the belt of the Flash. I think Maple picked up a Predator somewhere there. That's just what can happen with the Zoe on the map still. Fnatic with a pretty poor Siege comp. The Talia and the Sivir couldn't do turret damage until they had gone for the kill onto the Camille. They break the base in two spots. They take out the bot lane inhibitor. There may be a Drake claim, but nothing to write home for. For Flash Wars and Fnatic are really only one team fight away. 
from a game victory. But the thing is, the way in which Flash Wolves are playing and the fact that for a lot of this game, it feels like that Maple has been finding constant picks. Fnatic fans are probably still a little bit worried because every time they get close to this tower, a single Sleepy Trouble Bubble, a single Morgana Binding will result in a member dead, and that's when the Flash Wolves begin the chase. And that's what we were saying even back at the beginning of the draft, when you have the nature of a split-pushing top laner, when you have a jungler that's more of a fighter instead of a pure tank, that's the risk you run against something like a Morgana, Ezreal, and Zoe composition. You've got to be so careful. And then when it comes to pure team fights, they actually don't necessarily have the true 5v5 advantage. Sivir usually profits out of an extremely strong front line to allow her to do the consistent damage. She doesn't have that. She has a fighter, and she has Olaf, who can really only spend so much time on the front line with a build that's about amping the Sivir's damage than anything else. So when it comes to getting impact out of Reckless Tricky, whereas maybe even Mujin can be a fighter of his own the moment that Orn occupies space in the front line. You can see Mujin working towards what looks to be a righteous glory now as we take a look at the damage done over the course of the entire game by champions. The mid lane very close between the two. Betty pulling ahead of Reckless significantly on the AD carry roll, practically tripling his damage. And that's what happens, and you see Reckless oh. gonna have, oh. has to heal just to that guarantee getting away, and that ult might have to be used for map rotation rather than fighting, because I think that tripling might even grow given how much damage is loaded onto Betty. He's four items strong. He's ready to go. You know, in an interview, Betty said that if he was to play in Europe, he would join the top team and he would give Reckless a run for his money. And many European fans laughed and said, nice, confident talk, like, it's great after a couple of wins, but after uh -huh, a performance like this, you're like, okay, this Betty guy is pretty scary. <laughs> He's actually playing extremely well. And the credit that the analyst gave him at the start of the day was definitely well deserved. What's also scary is losing your inhibitors for free like this. Hanabi can't do anything to stop Whippo's assault as Whippo now moving throughout the enemy base, trying to go even further. But once the rest of the team shows up, there's nothing he can do. He'll sacrifice his life for that inhibitor. And we'll see if that's worth it, because Baron spawns in 50 seconds, and the setup advantage of having a 5v4 is going to be there for the Flash Wars. There was no escape, because there was nobody else backing him up. It was just a solo play, no ability to get out. Does mean there is going to be those super minions pushing on, and if Fnatic can delay the Baron take, that can be an extra variable to respect. But for now, at least Flash Wars walk up, and I don't have to worry about the numbers of Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic are keeping ways pushed in with both the Sivir and the Talia pushing top and mid. And now you've got Super Minions pushing down bot as well. That will keep Flash Wars uh, from mainly just getting into their jungle and littering a couple of wards. But as you rightly said, it's Fnatic just stalling things out, waiting for Whippo to respawn. This Baron's going to be so difficult for Fnatic to take, though, because we always talk about this poke and pick power of Flash Wars comp. That is made even more lethal when you have the Baron debuff applied as well. You're taking damage from the Baron, you're more susceptible to extra damage, and you think about the amount of magic damage that's coming out of Maple and Betty, a single misposition could cost you everything. Illusong, not where he needs to be right now whatsoever. Caught out by the CC and brought down. Betty goes on a rampage with that one. 4-0 and 3 here on the Ezreal at 35 seconds until Hilly's back in the picture. Must admit, I looked at the map and wondered why why he was there, and yeah. the answer was there was really nothing to be there. There's no reason at all. So I guess that's a donation, and they'll take the donation and go straight for this battle. Not all questions have answers, Papa Smithy. And right now, the question for Fnatic, how do we stop the Flash Wolves Baron? Can well, Roxa do it again? The man worked a miracle once. The water can only turn into wine so many times. We'll see if he can pull it off here again. TP coming in, Flash Wolves looking oh good. My God! Oh, oh, man! man! He does it! Roxa, the hero of Fnatic! will steal there at number two. That time they had to go for it once again. Camille was in the base. You're already taking the second inhibitor. Oh my God, Broxa, he is keeping Fnatic alive. Give this man a raise because he is playing beautifully right now. Flash Wolves, they're doing everything that they possibly can to regain advantages. They find picks onto key members of Fnatic, yet they cannot secure that Baron. Because they're playing in a pit of fire. They played six games in a row where they controlled the pace, but from the early turret take, they've been rushed around Baron twice. Credit to Broxa picking up the smite both times, but he's in a position to do that because all the dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's that the Flash Wolves could do for the last three days have not been possible today. You have to imagine if this game would still be even going on if Broxa hadn't stepped up the way he had oh, in those yeah. two clutch moments. He has done so much work for this team by just being able to secure those 
And now Fnatic, still with a slight gold lead, they have two inhibitors down in their opponent's base. I mean, we have to be frank. Flash Wars, I feel, from the mid-game onwards, have played better League of Legends. And if it wasn't down to those individual plays coming out from Brox and even Bwipo in the individual performances that he's had as well, like, Fnatic would not be in the position that they're in. And considering how much praise Caps has had, he has not had the game so far today. But I think we have to, again, use our words very judiciously here and say it hasn't been the same flash wars that really smothered Kingzo yesterday. They've had to take risks. They've let an Olaf, they've let an enemy jungle get into the pit twice around back. Look at the collapse. Flash wolves has priority over the mid lane, but the collapse coming in, the Weaver's Wall goes out. Sleepy Trouble Bubble used to zone Fnatic away. Flash wolves recognize they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Here comes the fight. Mujin gonna be on the front line, having to flash himself away. Hextech ultimatum able to find the kill of the Sword Art. It's two dead on the side of the Flash Wolves. Fnatic have lost no one just yet, and Betty will fall to Reckless! Finally, that's the Reckless the European fans wanted to see. Flash is in, gets the solo kill onto Betty, and now Flash Wolves, they have three members dead. There is so much of Flash Wolves base destroyed. Fnatic can surely look to end here. Fnatic were the first team to put a loss on the King Zone record. Here they look to be the first team to put a loss on the Flash Wolves record. Hillisong comes in, utilizing the Tom Kench ultimate, pops the cleanse, trying to keep himself safe from the paddle star. He's just Still wasting time. Low. Exactly, keep Maple here, don't let him back, don't let him help Hanabi keep this base alive. Maple needs to get back as quickly as possible. Inhibitor turrets under siege. Hanabi trying to hold the line, Sword Art back alive. Black Shield onto Hanabi, Fnatic onto the Nexus. Maple's got the paddle star, Brox have taken low, it does not matter! The undefeated find defeat, and Fnatic serve it up! MSI 2018, the old gods of the Koreans have bled, the new gods of the Flash Wars have bled as well. Fnatic have been able to take down both, and they just played the map much better than we gave them credit for. Flash Wars had some great macro moments, but they could never do it with the cleanliness of days one through three in the pandemonium. Fnatic stand tall. But for the European fans, you guys have to cheer for Broxa. This is the man that kept Fnatic going. This is the man that found two Baron steals and allowed Fnatic to take that win and defeat the undefeated. Broxa, absolutely the star of the show here for Fnatic. Keeping cool not once, but twice in situations where failing to find that win could have very easily been the snowball that leads to the end of the game. And you love to see a game where Broxer is celebrated because so often he is doing the unsung things. He does not play for himself. He plays around his carries, he's about the setup, and then just being a tank, falling down in the service of his team victory. This time, his two moments were the highlights of the game. Maple as well is definitely worthy of talking about. 7-1-5 and five was his final score. He was one of the big reasons as to why Fnatic could not break into the base, could not push any advantages that they found because his use of Zoe was terrifying. And in terms of the mid lane matchup, he was definitely the one that stood up today. Now we saw this game go on for so long. The Flash Wolves looked like they were in a good spot, but Broxa kept Fnatic alive again and again. I want to take one more look at the final team fight, see exactly how Fnatic put those nails in the Flash Wolves coffin. This so is really a case where, you know, who was trapped in with who was the question, but if you notice the Orn, he doesn't feel like he should teleport and he's walking up. And that means that, well, the initiation starts and it looks good very early for Fnatic. Yeah, and the thing is here is that Reckless this time is just playing so much more confidently. There's nothing that he's afraid of. He knows he's in a better position with his team, setting up the engage, and he can just freely get all those damage down onto those multiple. And what do we say? It's going to be hard for him to team fight when he has to respect the Orn ult and the Orn zoning. Orn wasn't there. There was nothing to respect. The ult was down very early from Zin. Reckless goes forwards, he starts those auto attacks, he mows down the side of the flash wall. And now that battle for second place oh. becomes all the oh, more exciting. Yeah. We're going to four and three team. RNG have the 2 0 head to head over Fnatic. Fnatic took a win off the team that is yet to lose a game and even have a win over King Zone, whereas King Zone, like, there's a risk they might even finish down into fourth place, which defies all expectations.
There's a very spicy future ahead of us, boys, based on how these games have been playing out so far. And even at the end of that game, when we saw Hillisong make the noble sacrifice to keep the Zoe in place, Fnatic knew what they had to do to win from the start. And for more on that win, let's go ahead and throw things over to Shox in the top laner. Thank you very much. I'm here with Buipo. After you guys pulled that game out versus the Flash Wolves, you immediately said, I don't want to be interviewed. Interview Broxa. Tell me exactly how thankful you are to Broxa for those Baron steals. Uh, I think Broxa just really, there's really no words, right? Because our strategy was actually before the game is we were planning on doing this and we we're like, okay, when it comes to the Baron and they go for it, just 50-50 it. And if he gets the Baron, we end the game. And then I was really disappointed because we got that one Baron and it failed really badly. So I was really disappointed in myself that I couldn't like take the Camille and end the game there with the first Baron, which you should have been able to. And then he took the second one and just basically gifted us the game for free, which was really, really insane. It was crazy by him. I heard you talking about the fact that you thought that the side laners had to step up for Fnatic. Now it is Broxa that delivers you this, but you did play the Camille, which is a different style. You know, that is a carry. Talk to me about that pick and if that is something you guys want to do again. Uh, we feel like a lot of the teams right now, like for example, Flash Wolves especially, tend to ignore side waves when they play tanks. And we think that this type of champion, like the first game we played, you know, I was this way and I was like 100 and whatever CS up on him because he just refused to go side. So we just opted into a champion that would just end the game if you try and do that. So I think the Camille pick is something we might revisit. I'm not 100% sure on how we feel as I do think we failed on execution here and there, but all in all, it looked pretty okay. It did look good, and I have to ask about your personal experience. There was a bit of up and down. After the finals, I talked to you. You caught a bit of flack for being too confident, but you came here and you beat Khan. So <laughs> where, where's Buipo's mind at right now? Uh, right now, I just want to make sure our team gets out of groups. Once we lock, lock into Paris, uh, I might be a little more active and, and pipe up a bit more. Uh -huh. But right now, uh, I'm just trying to be humble because, honestly, the, we need to get to Paris. I think as Fnatic right now is our biggest shot. The, the tournament's incredibly competitive. And even in the games we played, even the games we lost, I feel like we could have won those games. We could have been the 7-0 and o team right now. And I hope we get to show that form in, in the playoffs if we do get there. So I'm just trying as hard as possible to get us there. Okay, fantastic. Well, these guys are all rooting for you. Fantastic job. Thank you. Congratulations. We vote over Thank to you, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Shox. Whippo recognizing the craziness of the group stages, saying that the way the team has looked at it up to this point is that they could have been the 7-0 team at this point. But guess what? They're the first team to hand Flash Wolves a loss here in this very ugly game. Very ugly and messy <laughs> game, but ultimately Broxa coming up with two tremendous smite steals to secure it for Fnatic. Yeah, talk about clean. I mean, there are so many stories going on with Fnatic at this tournament because Game to game, different people have been stepping up and different people have been underperforming. But Broxa has definitely had an amazing tournament. And it caps it off here with multiple Baron steals on the Olaf in very, very clutch situations. The first one is where I'm going to throw criticism Maple. to Flash Wolves. <laughs> he missed a Paddle damage star. earlier on that would have killed him. And also, because Reckless opted to push mid, there were only two people for the five that are in the pit for, for Flash Wolves. So whenever you're in these situations, you know there's a Sivir pushing mid, there's a Camille pushing top, you want to rush. They didn't actually have to rush here. And this one was just kind of icing on the cake. That is the cleaner Baron steal because there was a much larger time pressure and he really pulled that one off. Again, the veteranship though, to have that, that high blood pressure situation where he remains yeah. calm, finds True. the smite twice in the game and saves it for them. But I do want to kick back to day one of Flash Wolves. This is a big reason why we were a bit hesitant to pick them up and start running with this miracle success story of looking towards the undefeated tournament. Flash Wolves really struggled to set up specific objectives like the Baron, and it bit them in the ass here. Yeah, and listen, I think Broxa, that's not just those two Barons he secured. They were in the reverse scenario against Stark yesterday where there were two Baron steals that they were able to stop. And secured it. And secured it. So that's actually four in a row in those really high pressure situations that he's been able to secure Baron. Cold blooded. Yeah. He's cold blooded there on stage. Yeah, I actually want to talk more about the overall strategy that we're seeing here okay. um, that went into this, because this is something that was actually previewed by Evos. Evos hard commit to the split pushing, and they very clearly have 100% intention of only going for steals. Now, you're not going to get every steal, 
Yep. Unless you're Broxa. <laughs> uh, right. You're not always going to get every steal, but you don't need to get every single steal. As they showed, they got very close to winning with only getting a couple of the steals. And this is kind of what enables having... <laughs> a couple of the steals? <laughs> no, right. He's right. 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 Yeah. Uh, but okay. this is what enables and kind of empowers teams to pick split-pushing style. And why we're seeing it kind of have a resurgence here at this tournament is yeah. because if you have champions like Olaf, you have extra two damage in the kit. We've seen the Reckless Sling uh, as well as the Smite come together and the ultimate allowing you to get into that position. If you can just threaten the steal and have a super fed Camille split mm -hmm. pushing on the other side, you're guaranteed going to get some inhibitor damage. Yeah. And then maybe you also steal it. People called it out in the interview. He said that's part of the, you know, the logic that went into the Camille pick was recognizing other teams splitting the map and saying, hey, we don't have to group up and fight. As long as we can trade objectives and keep that side lane pressure, we can extend the game to the point where, hey, the steal does come through. And now we have that added power from the Baron buff that will allow us to close out the game. I do want to give credit to Reckless, though. Uh, coming into this, I was really hard on him. I didn't think he had the champion pool to step up to Betty. He didn't go for the Kaiser there, so obviously shied away from that one. But having the Sivir and the Tom Kench, you're never going to crack that lane. It's just going to clear. It's super defensive with the Spell Shield and the Devour. And so uh, allowing Bwipo to get all of those resources to really make it pay off, it was a very clever strategy. So hats off to Fnatic. Yeah, we had this big discussion about offense versus defense at the start of the show. And that doesn't mean that playing defense is always the wrong option. Like, when you pick serving that lane, the option is to play defense so you can be strong later. But what I also want to talk about is returning to pre-tournament expectations, right? Flash Wolves as 6-0, and we were wondering when they were going to drop a game. We weren't expecting them to go 10-0. I want to see how they respond to that. Oh, that's a very good question. As you mentioned, taking their first loss, I do want to take a moment to pull up the standings, remind our viewers where the teams have fallen as of yet. Still in first place, Flash Wolves are, and remember, they already have secured a spot in the semifinals at 6-1, and one, but Fnatic, RNG, and Kingzone all tied at 4-3. and three. This puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the next game, Jad. Fnatic still gets to play against Evos as well, who they're expecting to beat. So mm -hmm. Team Liquid not only does Team Liquid or Evos need to win that? They probably have to win out. I feel like all those top four teams are at least getting five wins. So either Evos or Team Liquid have to win every single game. It's absolutely do or die time for both of these teams in our third matchup of the day. After the break, Evos, la or rather the two last place teams, Evos and Team Liquid, take a uh, look to secure a monumental win in the fight for the semifinals. We'll be right back. Coming for that. Over the wall they go. Hextech automation. Automatum going to be issued. They do take Sword Art down. Betty barely going to be getting himself away. Bujin can't quite find the damage. Uses the ultimate. Looking to get himself out. Doesn't can't matter. quite do it. Reckless grabs the kill. But the Mystic Shot will not find oh. the kill just yet. Maple going to be taken low and down. Bujin looks to zone away the bottom lane of Fnatic. Ornall comes through. True Shot Barrage also going to fire after it. Audacious Charge continues as Mujin goes in and finds the kill. Roxa wanting to try to steal this one away. Going to be taken very low. They want to try to Shut him down. Baron down to about 1k. Where's it gonna go? They got it for Fnatic! Oh, they're actually just carrying us. See if he can pull it off here again. TP coming in. Flash will look oh oh my God! Oh man! He does it! Brock's on the hero of Fnatic! Black Shield on the Hanami. Fnatic onto the Nexus. Maple's got the paddle star. Brock's have taken low. It does not matter! Predator, proud partner and official monitor provider.